everyone. This is Nate doing another one of these uh, day hike casual videos. Today I'm attempting to summit San Antonio Mountain in northern New Mexico. Pretty close to the New Mexico Colorado border. Probably like 20 miles north of Tres Piedras, if not a little bit less. This is a pretty interesting mountain. Of course, I'll talk about that more a little later. But already today is off to a crazy start this is probably the coldest hike i've ever done no idea what the temperatures are you can see it's not snot that's uh just condensation from my breath collecting on my mustache it's literally forming icicles and of course i'm much more prepared for this than it was in my last video i've got actual winter boots on i've got snowshoes see behind me i've got uh gators so I'm pretty warm. Winter, winter hiking, completely different beast than summer hiking. So I left Santa Fe about 5 a.m. It was snowing. Not super hard, but enough to obscure visibility and hit on Forest Road 87. It's a pretty decent amount of snow on it. Probably like a foot and a half, 12 inches. And there's already, there's one car, like a two wheel drive sedan, that's just stuck in snow. There's nobody in it, or at least I didn't see anybody in it, so presumably that happened a while ago. And then my car was jerking all around while I was driving. I know I need an alignment fix, but uh, it was pretty severe. And it didn't start happening until I got on Forest Road 87, so the snow is actually pretty good for snowshoeing. In fact, I'm already kind of floating on it without wearing the snowshoes. I'm not wearing them now because you see the mountain is pretty devoid of snow as you start getting on the slopes. Well, so, you know, I mentioned my car was jerking around. Then I get to the fence line where I'm parking and there are really not a lot of good places to pull off that don't have a lot of snow on them. And so I parked I thought, you know, I'm going to see if I can get out of this because I don't want to park somewhere, come back around 3 o'clock and find out I can't leave. Sure enough, I got stuck. So I had to kind of dig myself out. Thankfully, I'm, I think I'm in a much better spot now. I don't think I'll have any problem getting out, but it is really bad snow for driving. Perhaps you can see my car down there. It's a gorgeous morning scenery. The sun has been up for about uh, 30 minutes now. Up, up, and so much warmer. Just in that 30 minutes, it's gotta have increased 10 degrees. So I think it'll be pretty nice. Probably gonna snowshoe when I hit this patch on the way back. It looked a lot shorter from the bottom than it really is. But we're definitely almost at the point where the snow is pretty much gone because it's a southward facing slope. So right here, it's pretty uh, low gradient. But then when the slope increases, it gets a lot of sun. So I'll show you that now. Okay, over that much further. We've gone a little over a mile in 30 to 45 minutes. So there are two good routes of this mountain that I know of. Is there it's definitely, you know, uh, um, how do I put this? It, the slope is not very intense. There's no cliffs or anything. There's really not even that much forest. So I don't think there's really a bad route up the mountain, but there's two main routes. The south route, which kind of follows this fence line. And then you just keep going up this exposed slope. I actually think it'll really start to warm up as the sun rises. And then the west slope, which uh, the west slope, probably a little bit less overall elevation gain, probably a little shorter too. But obviously the advantage to the south slope is, like I said earlier, the uh, sun exposure. But one route you don't want to take is the east route. There is a private road. So as we'll hopefully see, there are some communication towers at the top of the mountain. And there's a road that leads up to those communication towers. And it goes through private land. And from everything I've read, those private landowners don't want anyone near them. And the... Ranger, when I called them, he specifically said, do not go up that road. The 
Landowners are very hostile to people trying to trespass on their land. So definitely don't take the east route, but I don't expect in summer this would be a very difficult mountain. Um, and in winter, really, the only thing that'll make it tough is snow. Okay, so I am following Phil Robinson's track. Um, ironically, I mentioned Phil in my Ute Peak video, which I'll talk about Ute Peak a little bit more later, because we're very close to it now. And he starts cutting west across the fence line around here. So I'm gonna do that too. I think uh, there's a, an old road that is probably not maintained anymore, but it could make, sorry about that, <laughs> could make for nice hiking. And it's a little bit west of here, northwest. So that's what we're gonna do here, cut northwest of the fence line. So general rule of thumb, if uh, a mountain is prominent, you can see a lot from it. You can also see it from a lot of places. And that's definitely true with this peak. You can see it from Santa Fe. You can definitely see it from the top of Picacho Peak. And you can actually see it if you're driving north on US 285. When you crest the hill going out of town, if you look at it like you're 11 o'clock, you can see the peak. And another cool thing about this peak is it's kind of like, in my mind, the gateway to the north northwestern mountains of New Mexico. You know, a lot of people, they think about the Rockies in New Mexico, they think the Sangre de Cristo range, which is where all the really beautiful peaks are. This is the amazing stunning high country. But actually, the San Juan range starts in New Mexico, um, the southern end. So west of here, you know, when you're in the Taos Plateau and you look west, it just looks like you're looking at the, end of, the edge of the earth. I mean, it's like a few small hills, just nothing particularly behind it. But as you go further west, the country really opens up, turns into something really beautiful. Not a lot of like jagged scenic peaks, but well, Brazos Cliffs notwithstanding, but a lot of really cool scenery. Actually, the Cruces Basin Wilderness is out there. Check out my backpacking video on that. One of my, one of my first ones, and it's actually, in my mind, held up kind of well given that my style, you know, everybody's style changes a little bit. That one I think is held, held up pretty well. So yeah, just continuing on this mountain, it's really tough to talk. Not only because I'm hiking, but also it's so cold. My jaw is like freezing up, it makes me slur, it makes me feel like I'm drunk. And, um, but as you can tell, no hat, no gloves, it's warming up. So we'll keep on pushing. So peaceful and beautiful up here. You definitely see that if I had hugged the west side of the slopes a little better, I probably could have avoided a lot of the deep snow. But as it stands, I did a lot of really hard hiking through deep snow. And again, I could have put my snowshoes on, but it seemed like it was gonna be over any second. So I did not. But it looks like we got a good break from snow drifts. I'm aiming for those four trees right there in the center. And, um, yeah, probably 1,200 vertical feet from the top. As you can tell, it's pretty exposed up here in terms of uh, weather. Not much protection from wind, rain, lightning, but we're about, uh, we're pretty close to the top, really. And we're at about 10,200 feet right now. Really made some good time just because there wasn't any deep snow. It was really slowing me down. And so I think I made that up and what I'm gonna do is hit the San Antone benchmark first. I think that's at about uh, 10,809 or 10,000, no, 10,880 or something. So it's almost as tall as San Antonio Mountain itself, but from what I read, it has better views. So I figure I'll treat myself to the views first and then I'll be motivated to add the actual peak and we'll call it a day and head back and probably get some hot chocolate or something on the way home. Okay, we are at about uh, 10,500 feet. So less than 400 feet away from our goal. And the time to don snowshoes has arrived. So put them on back there. And even though the powder up here is actually pretty loose versus down closer to the base, so it takes a little harder with the snowshoes, but way easier than just post holing. You see an awesome view to the south and east. 
really spectacular. This behind me here is the Antone benchmark. And uh, he doesn't, I don't know if you can see it, but this is my goal. You can see the radio towers at the summit of San Antonio Mountain. Here we're about 200 vertical feet, probably like a tenth of a mile or something from the Antone benchmark. And I don't really know what the views are gonna like, get like from here. We're not above tree line. For all I know, you, you might not be able to see anything from the summits. Figured I'd tour some of the P2Ks like it's become, well, I did it in the first video, so I'll do it in this video. You see right ahead of us is the Hamas, way out there, it's very far away. And uh, you can definitely make out Chikuma Mountain, the one in the center, uh, skating left. Oh yeah, you can't really see it right now, it's kind of covered in clouds, but I could see it on the way up, this place in a mountain near Santa Fe. Um, scanning left, clouds covering up a lot of the Sangres. You can see in the middle, peeking out there, Truchas Peak. Continue to scan left. Uh, Picurus Mountain is right there in the center, but it's really hard to make out. You can, it's, it's in front of clouds that are uh, very low. And scanning further to the left, see the uh, beautiful peaks by the Taos ski area, obviously Wheeler Peak is on the list. Scanning left, I'm pretty sure through the pass in that gun sight pattern, I'm pretty sure that's Baldy Mountain, which of course I summited back in September. Going left, you know, I can't remember if Venado Peak is on the list, but that's the last year group and the tallest mountain is Venado Peak. And you can kind of see peeking out to the left there, Little Costilla, and then uh, none of these mountains are on the list to the left until you get to Colorado. So, Culebra Peak is the tall one right behind Ute Peak. Ute Peak. I don't know, you know, I had done some 2,000 foot prominence peaks before Ute Peak. But I think Ute Peak is kind of what uh, got me interested in doing this thing. All these 2,000 prominence peaks. So Ute Peak is actually, it's not the tallest mountain in the Taos Plateau. That's actually San Antonio Mountain. But Ute Peak is the tallest mountain on the uh, Rio Grande del Norte National Monument. Newly, yeah. I, I don't know if it's really newly designated anymore. I think that was 2012, so. Uh, that's a really cool mountain. I love the views from up there. It's really unique view of the whole Rio Grande Valley. And actually Ute Peak has taller, even though Ute Peak is about 900 feet shorter than San Antonio Mountain. It's higher prominence by a lot. San Antonio is pretty low on the list, but Ute Peak is like somewhere in the 20s, I think. And it's just because you have the gorge to the west of the peak, so it can't really connect to these, uh, s you know, the southern San Juans I was talking about earlier. My point about the snowshoes, so far deep they way down. So you're not really getting 100% protection, you know. I will say, I don't want to jinx myself, but uh, these aspen groves, they're looking pretty spooky. And, uh, I've read some weird stuff about this peak. Apparently aliens have been sighted up here. There was one incident in particular in December 2001 or something. And uh, cattle mutilations are apparently common. And to make matters worse, while I was reaching this or researching this stuff, I discovered that apparently, uh, now, okay, I don't want to be disrespectful. So this is just something I read in a blog. I have no idea if it's true. But apparently a, a Tiwa version of Sasquatch lives up here. And the Tiwa name for this mountain is Capine, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, which means Bear Mountain. And this is the mountain of the North in their cosmology. So that's what I learned about this mountain, but these aspen groves, yeah, they're spooky. And I think the benchmark is right through them. So I have to go this way, but I'm not looking forward to it. Well, we've made it to the benchmark. There's a cool cabin up here, which I'll get a better view of in a bit. But the view of the surrounding area is just awesome. See, that's looking to the west, panning south. Very beautiful.
Okay, the snow is ridiculously deep. I mean, this is actually a good spot. Some places like, it must be three feet deep. So show this video to all your friends who don't think New Mexico gets snow and tell them I hate them. That's a joke. I'm just saying, I don't think a single step has been so hard. So I kind of made it to the uh, flat top of the actual peak and there's a lot of electronic equipment up here. Uh, my service is terrible, so I take it they're not cell towers, at least not for my provider. And uh, the ranger made sure to caution me not to go near the equipment. Um, I can see why he would. See the equipment definitely looks climbable. And the view from this peak so far is non-existent. So uh, would not surprise me if people in the past have climbed up this equipment. And uh, you can definitely understand why they wouldn't want that. I'm not sure where the actual summit is. Definitely looks like I'm at the peak and it looks like it's going downhill, but my map says that the summit is further that way. So, so we'll just keep going, see if we find a register or benchmark or something. Well, and then right after I finished saying that, I checked my GPS and it looks like this is the summit. Um, no cairn or register or anything that I can see, obviously, it's always possible it's below snow. Um, I'm gonna walk over here because it looks like it's higher than where I am right now, so that might be the true summit. Uh, it does involve walking towards electronic equipment, but I am not going near it. Well, here we are. This is what I'm gonna assume is the summit. Didn't really read any trip, didn't, I read a lot of trip reports. None of them really gave great detail as far as what the true summit is, so. I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that this is the true summit. Again, I'm not gonna waste too much time looking for a cairn or register, given that everything's under two, three feet of snow. I'm gonna call that a victory. So, unless anything cool happens on the way back, I'm probably gonna take mostly the same way back. I might try to avoid summoning San Antonio benchmark, just cause that's like 200 feet of elevation gain and I swear, Every 100 feet I've gone up, it feels like, a, like 500 feet. It's just so brutal uh, snowshoeing. But with that said, if I don't see ya. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. Hope you enjoyed seeing beautiful winter New Mexico scenery. See you next time. Well, the nice thing about coming back the way I came is that some sucker has already packed down the snow. So that's real good for me.